On forums online you often see discussions about pilot licenses, what they are, what's the difference between them, how to get them, and the difference between a license is from ICAO, EASA and FAA. Technically, ICAO doesn't issue licenses, neither does EASA, but FFA does. So, how does it work? Hi, my name is Magnar Nordahl. I'm an ATR typewriting instructor and airline captain. And this channel is all about aviation. Today, I will talk about something every pilot has, and that's a license. When you start to consider becoming a pilot, you will have many questions about what kind of license do I need? What's the difference between the licenses? What's required to get a license? Where can I do it? On this video, I will explain all the facts so you can navigate more easily through the general of the rules. The International Civil Aviation Organization, or ICAO, is an agency of the United Nations. It was formed with the Convention of International Civil Aviation, also known as the Chicago Convention, which became effective in 1947. All members of the United Nations, with the exception of Liechtenstein, which doesn't have airports, are members of ICAO. In addition, is Cook Islands a member? That means that ICAO has 193 member states. Taiwan, or officially the Republic of China, is not a member of the UN and therefore not a member of ICAO. However, they are very close to ICAO standards. ICAO issues standards and recommended practices for civil aviation. They are called SARPs, which are published as annexes to the Chicago Convention. In all, there are 19 annexes. And Annex 1 is about personal licensing and includes flight crew, air traffic controllers, and aircraft maintenance, as well as medical standards. The annexes are not rules, but standards and recommendations. It is up to each member state to define their own rules. Therefore, we have 193 different civil aviation authorities who issue licenses. So we can say every pilot license is an ICAO license. In order to harmonize the aviation rules in Europe, the European Union formed the European Aviation Safety Agency, or EASA. All 28 member states and the members of the European Free Trade Association, or EFTA, are members of EASA. However, the United Kingdom has announced that they will leave EU and EASA at the end of 2020. EASA issues rules based on ICAO's SARPs. Therefore, all EASA member states follow the same rules. This has several benefits when it comes to aircraft certification and licensing. According to ICAO Annex 1, there are six categories of aircraft. Aeroplane or airplane, glider or sailplane, free balloon, airship, powered lift, which is an aircraft that takes off and lands vertically and uses a fixed wing for horizontal flight, and helicopter. Each category of aircraft requires a pilot license. According to ICAO Annex 1, there are five licenses. Student pilot, PPL, private pilot license, CPL, commercial pilot license, MPL, multi-crew pilot license, and ATPL, Airline Transport Pilot License. Not every aviation authority issue all of those licenses. And there are some aviation authorities that issue all the licenses. One example is EASA, where the member states issue the following licenses. LAPL, 
light aircraft pilot license. This is a light version of a PPL with restrictions when it comes to the weight and size of the aircraft. Then we have PPL, CPL, MPL and ATPL. EASA does not have student pilot license. Instead, the instructor will issue a written authorization before each solo flight. Training to a license consists of theory, theoretical exam, flight training, and a flight test. Let's have a look at each license in more detail. Student pilot. You need a medical class too. A student pilot license allows you to fly solo under supervision of an instructor as part of the training to PPL. Private pilot license. PPL. You must be at least 17 years and have medical class 2. A PPL allows you to fly non-commercially. You can fly with family and friends and you can share expenses, but you are not allowed to earn money. The training program consists of minimum 40 hours, including 10 hours solo and 5 hours cross-country. Cross-country is a flight between two airports at least 50 nautical miles apart along a pre-planned route. Commercial Pilot License CPL. You must be at least 18 years and have medical class 1. A CPL allows you to earn money while you are flying, but you must work for a certified operator. You can be pilot in command on aircraft certified for single pilot operations and first officer or co-pilot on aircraft certified for multi-pilot operations. The requirement for a CPL is a PPL, 200 hours total flight time, whereof 100 hours as PIC, pilot in command, 20 hours cross country as PIC, 10 hours instrument flight training, and five hours night flight. Multi-crew pilot license, MPL. You must be at least 18 years and have medical class one. An MPL qualifies you to be first officer on multi-pilot airplanes. The MPL training course starts from zero flight time and gives you at least 240 hours of actual and simulated flight. The training includes the syllabi for CPL, multi-engine class rating, instrument rating and MCC course. I will talk more about MCC later. Airline Transport Pilot License, ATPL. You must be at least 21 years and have medical class 1. An ATPL qualifies you to be pilot in command on multi-pilot airplanes. As a prerequisite, you must have CPL and instrument rating or MPL. Normally, the company will upgrade you from co-pilot when you are qualified to become a captain and you are the next on the seniority list. Minimum experience is 1500 hours, whereof 500 hours pilot in command under supervision, this is called PICUS, or 250 hours as pilot in command, or a combination of those. You also need 200 hours of cross-country flight time, 75 hours instrument time, and 100 hours night flight time. You may heard about frozen ATPL. This is not a license. Frozen ATPL means that you have passed the written exam to ATPL. In order to get a job with an airline company, you need this. To be allowed to use the radio on board an aircraft, you will need a radio operator's permit. This permit is inserted into your license after your skill test. If you speak English during your skill test, you will be allowed to fly in any country worldwide. But if you speak another language during your skill test, and I mean on the radio, your license will be restricted to be used in states where this language is spoken. Therefore, I recommend you to speak English on the radio during the test. But using standard phraseology when you communicate with the control tower is not enough. You must be able to communicate in normal language. Therefore, ICAO has set standards for language proficiency. There are six levels, 
and a pilot needs level 4 or higher. On this picture, we have three crew members from three different nations. France, Maldives and Norway. In order to work efficiently and safely together, we have to communicate in a common language, and that is English. But a license alone is not enough. The license must be assigned to a class or type of airplane. When you fly aircraft certified for a single pilot, you can choose between four different class ratings. They are single engine LAN, single engine C, multi engine LAN, and multi engine C. When you have a CPL, MPL, or ATPL, you can become a flight instructor. I highly recommend this because that can keep you flying while you're waiting for an airline job. As an instructor, you must hold at least the license and rating as pilot in command for which instruction you will give. You can also add an instrument rating to your license, which means you can fly instrument flight rules. And this is required for you to get an airline job. An instrument rating can be added to a PPL and a CPL. It's included in an MPL and ATPL. To qualify for an instrument rating, you need 50 hours cross-country flight and the training consists of a ground school and 40 hours instruction. If you combine an instrument rating with your CPL, you can save 10 hours of flight training because the CPL also requires 10 hours instrument training. To fly an uh, airliner, you will uh, need a type rating, which means you can fly a multi-pilot aircraft. ICAO Annex 1 doesn't tell much about requirements, so I will show you the requirements given by EASA. To get a type rating, you need 70 hours piloting command, you need multi-engine and instrument rating, you must have passed the ATPL theory, which means frozen ATPL, and you must have a MCC course, or you need 500 hours on an other multi-pilot airplane. The training is quite intensive. You will have about two weeks ground school with systems, performance, limitation, procedures, and a lot of this is self-study in front of a computer. Then you do simulated training, at least eight sessions with uh, four hours each. When you finish the simulator training, you do a skill test, and then you will need six takeoff and landings in the aircraft. Some simulators, some airplane models, allows you to do this in a simulator, but on, especially on smaller aircraft like turboprops, you need to find an aircraft where you can do your six takeoff and landings. This can be very difficult because of insurance requirements, so therefore, I recommend you, when possible, get the type rating when you get a job in an airline. EASA also requires a multi-crew cooperation course, MCC, before your first type rating. It can be integrated in a type rating course, which then takes more time. The MCC course takes you from a single pilot to a multi-pilot. You will learn the role of the pilot flying and the role of pilot monitoring. You will go through normal procedures, for example, to the right to see what you do when you want to extend the landing gear. The pilot flying shall not touch the landing gear level and will therefore ask for gear down and the pilot monitoring will check the parameters are right, you don't fly too fast, speed checked, select the gear level down, Checks the indication, then call gear down. Another pilot flying with checked indication and say, checked. In this way, both pilots see what's happening, both communicate together, both know what's happening. They will also practice emergency procedures. This is a Piper Cherokee. In 1987, I did my PPL skill test in that aircraft. Since the aircraft was registered in Norway, I got a license that allowed me to fly aircraft registered in Norway only. 
This is a very important limitation for pilot licenses. You are only allowed to fly aircraft registered in the same country as your license is issued. If you want to fly an aircraft registered in another country, you must convert your license to that country. More about that later. There is only one exemption to this rule, and that is EASA, which was formed in 2002 and became fully operational in 2008. At that time, my license was upgraded to comply with EASA rules. This allows me to fly aircraft registered in any EASA member state without having to convert my license. Therefore, I can fly aircraft registered in Finland or Switzerland or United Kingdom. However, United Kingdom will leave EU and EASA on 31st of December 2020. From then on, a pilot who wants to fly an aircraft registered in the United Kingdom must have a license issued by CIA UK. To fly an aircraft registered in India, you need a license issued in India. And to fly an aircraft registered in the US, you need a license issued in the US. In some countries, a license is valid for five years, in other countries, 10 years, and in the ASA member states, the license is valid for life. But in order to use your license, you need the following. A valid class rating or a type rating. If you want to fly IFR, you need a valid instrument rating. And if you want to be an instructor, you need a valid instructor rating. All ratings are valid for a limited period of time. For example, my type rating and my instrument rating are valid for 12 months, and they are revalidated with a similarity check. You need a valid medical, and the validity depends on the class of the medical, the type of flight operation, and the age of the pilot. And finally, you need a valid language proficiency. Level 4 is valid for 3 years, level 5 is valid for 6 years, and level 6 is valid for life. Conversion of a license from one state to another takes some time and effort. First of all, your license has to be verified, and that is done by the new authority contacting the issuing authority and asking for this verification, and this can take up to a month alone. You will also need a medical check and you will need to hey you will have to take a written test. Some states require only one test in the rules and regulations while EASA for example require full test that means the full ground syllabi and for an ATPL that means you have 14 different subjects. That takes a little time. You may need a flight test or a simulator test and you may need a language assessment test and if you are moving a type rating to the new license you will need either 500 hours on this uh, aircraft or other multi-pilot aircraft or you will have to take an MCC course. A validation is uh, similar to a conversion, but you don't get a permanent license. So validation is based on your current license and it's valid for only 12 months at the time. When it comes to private flight, there is a fast track. A core recommendation, quote, a pilot license issued by a contracting state should be rendered valid by other contracting states for use in private flights. A friend of me has an ATPL issued by uh, CAA in Norway and he has a type rating on Boeing, that's his job, and he has a single engine land class rating. He went to United States to FAA and they issued a PPL to him and he now uses it to fly and practice aerobatics. So, if you have just finished your training, what should you do now? There are many pilots, experienced pilots, looking for new jobs. And when the airline companies start to open up, 
those people will be the first in the queue. But my advice is be resilient, don't give up, because this crisis will go over. In a couple of years you will see a lot of people traveling again, you will see the airline company hiring back their old people. And I belong to a generation called the baby boom from around the 1960s. There are many of us and we are about to retire. And you have to fill up more pilots from below. And this will happen in the next five years. So my advice is be resilient, keep your license ratings valid, whatever the cost, okay? If you are about to start your training, I have another advice. Don't put all your eggs in a single basket. Most, many airline companies, they require the pilots to have a degree. And why not take a little time, get yourself an education before you start pilot training? Because when you have a degree, you have a good option to find a job. That will give you a secure income, you can save some money if you have some discipline. And when the time is right, you start the flight school. And almost nobody gets a job just after a flight school, so you will need an income again. And with a proper education, you have it. You have a secure income, which will help you paying down your debt for your training. And when you finally get your job, for me, it took seven years. From I had my license until I get an airline job. During those years, I was an instructor. Commercial flight school, flight clubs. I had other jobs to f keep my economy going. And that is my advice to you, have another option. I know many pilots, they have many good educations. One is a doctor, he was lucky because he got very busy working at the hospital. Some are police officers, some are farmers, people have very different backgrounds. And many of them, they have a proper education so they can go back to that in a crisis like we have today. So therefore, don't give up, plan ahead. That's my best advice today. I hope you learned something today and you can use that in the future. And please support my channel by click like, support by clicking subscribe, share with your friends, and thank you for watching. Happy learning.